All right, everybody ready? And you're going to do the slides? Okay, good morning, and thank you for coming today to discuss a topic that I've been spending a lot of time on over the past year, protecting water quality at the Lake of the Ozarks. Uh, this set of remarks is a little long. We've got 12 recommendations. We're going to briefly go through all of them, so it's probably five minutes uh, of a uh, prepared statement. There has been significant concern over the past two summers about E. coli contamination at the Lake of the Ozarks and questions about decisions to close public beaches. This has been a topic of hearings in the Missouri Senate as well. The question behind the controversy is clear. Is water in the Lake of the Ozarks clean? And how can we protect water quality in the future? Last August, I hosted a symposium regarding the Lake of the Ozarks water quality entitled An Environmental Roadmap for the Future. This event extended over two full days and was attended by more than 100 people each day. Today, I'm releasing the symposium's report. The report contains 12 specific recommendations, which I hope will serve as a roadmap for lawmakers, public officials, and concerned citizens as we work together to protect water quality at the Lake of the Ozarks. These recommendations are going to fall into three categories. First, regionalization. How can communities pool local resources, save money, and protect our state's great natural resource? Second, monitoring and public health. What steps can be taken to more accurately and efficiently test water quality and alert the public concerning potential health concerns? And third, statutory changes to protect the Lake of the Ozarks and public health and to punish environmental polluters. I'll go through them for you quickly. First, regionalization. I believe that there is wide consensus that on-site sewage disposal sy systems, otherwise known as septic tanks, are the most significant threat to protecting water quality at the Lake of the Ozarks. There are estimated to be more than 15,000 systems around the perimeter of the lake, most of which were installed prior to 1996 when regulations establishing minimum standards were first adopted by the Department of Health. Experts believe that a high percentage of these pre-1996 systems would not comply with current standards today, and many of them are likely failing. There have been numerous studies and reports conducted over the past 20 years regarding the elimination of these systems. The best way to do this is through a regional sewer effort, which is why our number one recommendation is for the county commissions of Camden, Miller, Benton, and Morgan counties to work together to create a regional sewer system whose boundaries would sur uh, surround the Lake of the Ozarks. Our report provides specific gu guidelines on how this could be done with existing statutes. I also recommend a specific statutory amendment that would give such districts the authority to generate revenue through locally enacted sales taxes, in addition to the bonding method for revenue that they currently enjoy under this Missouri statute. The Lake region is unique in that the vast majority of people who would benefit from these services provided in a regional sewer district do not actually look, live full time in the district. They should share in the financial burden to construct and operate a regional sewer system. To assist with this regionalization effort, I'm recommending also that the University of Missouri Extension System conduct a study to determine the number and the location of on-site sewage disposal systems around the perimeter of the lake, which is recommendation number two. This information is critical to any regional sewer district planning effort. Next, monitoring and public health. I'm convinced that my microbial source tracking is an essential tool that should be used at the lake to discover the primary sources of bacterial contamination in the water. By using a form of bacterial DNA fingerprinting, researchers can determine which bac bacterial pollution is coming from geese, from livestock, from local septic systems, or even from Party Cove. I'm recommending that the Department of Natural Resources and the U.S. Geologic Service work together to develop and target a sampling plan for the Lake of the Ozarks uh, for that watershed that will include microbial source tracking as an integral component. Also, with regard to monitoring, 
I believe it's extremely important that Ameren UE continue its support with the Department of Natural Resources and the Lake of the Ozarks Watershed Alliance in their water quality monitoring efforts. I've discussed this proposal with the leadership of Ameren UE, and I'm thankful for their willingness to seriously consider continuing to fund an additional five years of monitoring when their current obligations under their federal license has expired. We also propose two specific recommendations to address concerns associated with bacterial contamination at public beaches. We are recommending that the Department of Natural Resources work together with the Department of Health and Senior Services to reevaluate the current beach closure process so that it may be enhanced by a more comprehensive health advisory system. I'm recommending that the Department of Natural Resources adopt a predictive modeling tool to monitor water quality at the state park beaches. Such a tool would, would uh, provide real-time environmental da data that has been shown to highly correlate with bacterial levels. Experts agree that the current sampling methodology, whereby samples taken on a Monday or a Tuesday are being used to determine whether a beach is going to be closed on the following Saturday or Sunday, is ineffective because of the rapidly changing nature of the bacterial conditions in the water. By adding computerized buoys, which are now scientifically available, we can co collect real-time data that will tell us within hours, not days, whether a public health concern exists and whether a beach should therefore be closed. The most immediate water quality concern at the Lake of the Ozarks is actually an overabundance of nutrients. In 2010, the Missouri Clean Water Commission added two arms of the lake to the state's list of impaired waters. The cause of the listing was pollution from nutrients coming from urban and non-urban stormwater runoff. I'm recommending that county commissions in the four county region around the lake encourage low impact development landscaping around the perimeter of the water's edge and the use of low phosphorus or phosphorus free fertilizer within the watershed. This could be accomplished through ordinances, through education, and or through financial incentives. And finally, statutory changes. Because a regional sewer district cannot be formed and built within the next three to five years, and some areas may not have sewer coverage within the next 15 to 20 years, if ever, we are recommending that the Missouri legislature enact legislation requiring all on-site systems located within 2,500 feet of the Lake of the Ozarks to pass inspection at the time of sale. Failing systems would be required to upgrade or to connect to a regional sewer system as soon as one becomes available. If we are indeed serious about protecting water quality at the lake, and as populations and septic usage dramatically increase there in the coming years, then addressing these aging septic systems is critical. Failure to establish some minimal standard of testing is the equivalent of willingly allowing an aging system, aging septic system to leach sewage into the Lake of the Ozarks. I believe this inspection requirement at the time of a property sale is the least intrusive method of accomplishing our common goal. It is clear to me that state laws intended to protect public health and water quality are also inadequate. I'm making two specific recommendations to the Missouri Legislature to strengthen laws and enforcement efforts administered by the Department of Natural Resources and the Department of Health and Senior Services. First, we're recommending that the Department of Natural Resources hire and the Missouri's General Assembly fund two additional full-time inspectors at the Lake of the Ozarks. Next, we're recommending that Chapter 701 of the Missouri Statutes be amended to enhance the Department of Health and Senior Services Inspection Authority and its Criminal and Civil Enforcement Authority. Health inspectors should be able to inspect on-site disposal systems that they suspect are failing without having to wait for some neighbor to complain. And county prosecutors should have the ability to impose civil as well as criminal penalties to seek injunctions for non-compliance with the health codes governing on-site sewage systems in this state. 
and to assist the property owners on fixed incomes who own older or grandfathered systems, pre-96 systems, and who wish to upgrade them, I'm recommending that the legislature consider a tax credit or a tax deduction that would assist such individuals with the cost of replacing these old and failing systems which are currently leaching sewage into the Lake of the Ozarks. Finally, our panel is asking the legislature to strengthen the criminal provisions of the Missouri Clean Water Act. This law is the primary enforcement tool that Missourians use to protect the Lake of the Ozarks and our other state waters. Currently, the most a, a criminal can be charged with is a misdemeanor, regardless of the damage caused or the intent of the person who caused it. In other words, a citizen who pours half a can of motor oil into a local storm sewer is treated no differently than an interstate trucker who dumps thousands of gallons of gasoline into the ditch on the side of a road. I'm recommending that a person who willfully or recklessly commits any violation of the clean water law that creates a substantial likelihood of environmental damage, human health risk, or property damage be guilty of a felony. This language is similar to language that is routinely used in other states and is long overdue in the state of Missouri. My goal is that the symposium and this report will be used as a tool for state and local leaders to start making an effort now to protect water quality at the Lake of the Ozarks. I'm confident that if we work together in a positive and respectful manner, we will protect this valuable resource for futures and generations to come. Thank you. Happy to take any questions.